welcome to Constangi TV's Close Up on Workplace Law, where we zoom in on recent developments of interest to employers, to their legal counsel, and to their human resources professionals. I'm your host, Lee Tyson, and I'm a partner in Constangi's Atlanta office. So, Donald Trump was sworn in as the 45th President of the United States on January the 20th, and most people are expecting a whole lot of changes in our country. This is particularly true when it comes to labor and employment laws. So here to talk with us today about the employment law outlook uh, for the coming year and the coming administration is Jim Gaw, a partner and the office head in our Denver, Colorado office. And Jim practices in virtually every part of labor and employment law. And so he's very well suited and the perfect guy to tell us what you can expect in the coming administration. We're very lucky to have him. Jim, welcome. Thank you, Lee. Okay, so Jim, during the eight years of President Obama's administration, employers had to deal with a whole lot of stuff, some major initiatives. Uh, for example, there was the white collar exemption, um, overtime exemption regulations, which are subsequently enjoined by a court. You had the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, which was taking a more employee friendly stance and more of an aggressive stance on enforcement. And you had what many considered to be a very pro union National Labor Relations Board, in addition to the many directives that were actually issued towards federal contractors. So, will any of that get better for employers in a Trump administration? From the employee's perspective, yes, in general. I would expect the Trump administration to be more employer friendly and less aggressive in regulating employers. I would also expect possibly that uh, the Trump administration will reverse or undo some of the orders and regulations under President Obama. Okay, well, let's start with those overtime regulations. Those were blocked by a court. They've had a long history. So they were blocked by a court under President Obama's term. And then the Department of Labor under President Obama appealed that and it's still stuck there. It's still stuck waiting for a final resolution. But now we have President Trump in charge. And so what's his DOL going to do? Are they going to pick up the mantle? Are they going to withdraw? Are they going to rely on the lower court decision? What do you think will happen there? Well, Mr. Trump's nominee for Secretary of Labor is opposed to the overtime rule. But keep in mind that even if the DOL were to drop the appeal, the lower court's decision was not final. The lower court issued a preliminary injunction. In other words, uh, the court issued an injunction temporarily. So even if the DOL under President Trump were to withdraw the appeal, the lower court would still have to make a final decision on the overtime rule. The court may decide to uh, make the injunction permanent, or it may decide to dissolve the injunction. Okay, so if the court dissolved the injunction, that would put the Obama rule back in place? That's right, Lee. Um, the Trump administration could issue a new rule that is friendlier to employers, but it would have to go through a fairly lengthy administrative process to do so. How about the EEOC, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission? Under President Obama, the EEOC has taken some aggressive positions in litigation against employers. Uh, it has also interpreted the law in a, shall we say, proactive way interpreting Title VII's prohibition on sex discrimination to include sexual orientation, uh, and also interpreting Title VII's pregnancy discrimination provision to require reasonable accommodation, even before the U.S. Supreme Court held that uh, accommodations are sometimes necessary. Do you expect the Trump administration to be rolling back on any of these provisions? Well, we don't know who will head, uh, head up the EEOC under President Trump. Just today, the president appointed an acting chair. Um, my best guess at this point is the agency will be less aggressive in litigation against employers. Um, but its stated positions on the proper interpretation of the laws may not change, at least not drastically. But we'll have to wait and see. Oh, not in my favorite. How about the National Labor Relations Board? Obviously, my, the main focus of my practice. And um, in that area, I, I think it's fair to say that the National Labor Relations Board has been driving employers crazy with their increased regulations on social media and the rules about handbook rules. Do you see that changing? I think so. But uh, President Trump will have to wait till current members' terms expire. Right now, the board has three active members, two Democrats and a Republican. One of the vacancies was held by a Republican and the other a Democrat. The president will have the opportunity to fill both of those seats. 
with Republicans giving Republicans a majority on the board. And are Republican board members more likely to be sympathetic or more sympathetic at least to the needs of employers, particularly when it comes to them uh, maintaining control over their workplace, do you think? Not necessarily, but uh, you would think that they should be more receptive to the employer point of view. Particularly more receptive than uh, the cur or the President Obama's board was, I imagine. And now, finally, we've got the federal contractors. Can they look forward to some additional relief under President Trump? To some extent, but maybe not total relief. Fair pay and safe workplaces may be dead or in ICU, uh, but the paid sick leave rule and LGBT protections are likely to stay. Well, it should definitely be an interesting year. And uh, hopefully one that's going to be a little bit more, uh, a little easier on our employer clients at the very least. But Jim, thank you so much for your explanations and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Lee. And that's it for this edition of Close Up on Workplace Law. I'm Lee Tyson and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.